our first uh, webinar of 2021. Um, and this topic is one that um, I am particularly interested in because I grew up in a family of hunters, but I have not ever been hunting. And if I want to know how to get hunting, I feel like this is a great resource for finding that out. Um, a little bit about the South Carolina Wildlife Federation, since we do have some new people in attendance with us today. We are the oldest conservation nonprofit here in South Carolina. We were founded 90 years ago, believe it or not. This is our 90th anniversary. So we are excited to be around for 90 years and hopefully we will be around for another 90 and beyond. Um, but we do a little bit of everything here in South Carolina. Um, we advocate for wildlife at the state house. We host a number of conservation projects around the state. We of course do education programs like this, our women's outdoor retreat, uh, birding classes with Jay, um, and then um, I think that's about everything that we do here. So our website, um, this is one of many Zoom classes. We have links to all of those on our uh, website that take you over to our YouTube channel. So we look forward to helping you along your way to wildlife education. Um, and Jay, I am going to turn it over to you. All righty. One last thing. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, just pop them into the chat box. Make sure your chats are going to all panelists and all attendees. That's how we will um, ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, and I will just pop on and ask Jay those questions as they come up. Other than that, enjoy. All right. Thanks a lot, Shannon. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, being with us today. Um, and, you know, we've we've talked so many on, you know, just the wildlife um, from insects to birds and oysters and all sorts of stuff. And we haven't, um, this is the first one that we've ever done on hunting. So uh, I'm excited to be the person to present on that. And uh, again, just appreciate y'all uh, joining us today. Um, and I grew out my beard and I have my flannel shirt on um, to show how manly and uh, um, huntery I am. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. And this is a picture from Bear Island in November of this year. My brother and I were lucky enough to get picked in one of the DNR's lottery hunts, um, which basically means, you know, you, you see what time the hunting season is, and then you uh, pay a little extra money. I think it's only $25 uh, per person um, to, to put in this almost kind of like a raffle thing, I guess. Um, and uh, about once every three or four years, you, you get picked to hunt in one of these beautiful places here in South Carolina. Um, and so we had a great hunt. Uh, we had a lot of green wing teal and blue wing teal, which is a which a bird which is a bird I love to show people whenever we go there on birding trips. Um, but we were able to uh, to recycle those birds and, and turn them into uh, into into food after this, and, and that's one of the reasons why why we do this. Um, so, but before I became a bird guy, you know, I was a I was a hunter. Um, you know, I, I remember going out with my dad. You know, probably you know, from the, the time I was three years old, four years old, along with my older sister, I remember her still, <laughs> still carrying squirrels by the tail. And we, we had a, we had a cat named Kitty that used to come with us. Um, and we, we grew up on the south side of Lake Murray. Um, and that's one of my best memories, you know, that, that I have with my dad, uh, you know, not just that squirrel, the, the squirrel hunt there, but um, just all the, all the hunts, um, whether that was quail or, um, rabbits or deer, uh, you know, it, it reminds me uh, a, a lot of my dad and just uh, these these great times I had with him uh, in the in the outdoors. So I am going to go to the next screen here. In just a second. There we go. Um, so why do we hunt? Um, well, basically it's, I mean, it's food, right? Um, that's, that's the main, main reason, uh, I put in, I don't know if this is corny or not, but I believe it, uh, it's food for the plate and for the soul. Um, those are some of the ducks that we, we shot in Bear Island, um, and we turned them into nice, nice tacos. Um, and they were delicious. I remember my uh, youngest son, uh, picking off, uh, you know, the, the protein from the cutting board as, as after I had cooked it and he loved it. 
Um, but it's, uh, it's food for the soul too. I mean, just imagine all these places that we're going uh, throughout, throughout the year during hunting season. We're going you know, to places like Bear Island down there on the coast. Uh, we're going all the way to the mountains uh, to hunt and everywhere in between. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great recreation. Um, the camaraderie that, that we have, uh, in the field, um, you know, I, I've made some great, uh, friends, in birding, um, and those, those friendships are probably going to be lifelong. Well, I've had the same thing with, with hunting, uh, especially bird hunting. Um, you don't have to be quiet, <laughs> so you can, you can walk around and, and talk. And when you're in a duck blind, you can, you can chat with your friends and, and then you do have to get quiet when those, those birds do come. But, um, you know, you, you create, uh, lifelong friendships, um, and, uh, have great discussions out there. Um, it's, it's really, really fun. Uh, you, you get this intimate connection uh, with, with nature. Um, you know, one of, I guess one of my favorites is uh, my dad and I sat on the ground a lot whenever we, we uh, uh, went deer hunting. And one of my favorite um, memories is this red fox that used to visit me uh, while I was sitting on the ground next, you know, against a tree on the south side, you know, of Lake Murray. Um, and I don't know, it probably happened three, four or five times where the, the fox would just sit in front of me probably 30, 40 feet away and just stare at me, uh, tail tucked around him, uh, just staring, you know, sitting like a, like a dog would, um, just looking at me. And I'll never forget that. Um, but I've had owls land in the same tree, you know, just a few feet from my face, wondering what my eyeballs were, you know, in the, in the dark while I'm waiting for the sun to come up. Um, you know, the, the coveys of quail that just burst from the, from the forest floor, the, the, the clear cut that scare the daylights out of you. Um, but, but that's a, that's a feeling that you, that great feeling that you get whenever that happens. And it's a, it's a fun memory to have. Um, and just think about nowadays, you know, whenever I, I was a kid, this wasn't such a, a, a big deal, but, uh, think about now with all the screens, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a student, uh, these days, you're in front of a screen, uh, during the day in, in class. And then you're probably in front of a screen on your phone uh, before you even get to class and you're definitely on one after class. Uh, so it's an escape from that. Um, you know, they're, they're besides your phone, um, which usually stays in your pocket during a hunt, um, there are no screens out there in, in, uh, in, in the woods. So uh, it's a good escape. Um, and it's just living life. I mean, everything that I just said, um, you, you know, just, just laughing with people, um, creating friendships, uh, eating fantastic food. Um, and exploring the, the, the planet that we live on. Uh, it's, it's all a part of uh, living life. So what do you need to get started if you've never tried it before? And this is a, a picture of one of our board members, Digit. Um, and I don't think you're probably gonna see this scene too many times in South Carolina. I think he was out West. Um, I don't know if you remember where he was, Shannon, but uh, in the Northwest, I believe maybe, uh, but he was not in South Carolina. I think he was actually in Wisconsin for this one. So that's a perk to hunting right there. <laughs> you travel the United States while you were hunting and explore different climates. Just make sure you follow their local hunting laws, right? Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. And so that, that's a good point. You, you want to always look up the, the, the laws, uh, the hunting laws in, in any state um, or, or different part of the, the state that you may be visiting, even in South Carolina. Um, so what you need to get started, uh, first, I guess, you know, I should put money on here, um, you know, because this gear does, does cost a, a bit of money. If you want to stay warm like Digit's doing right now, you have to invest in a, in a coat that is warm, waterproof. Um, a lot of times, it, it, what you're going to want. Um, and those things cost some money, but, you know, I still have a jacket that I, you know, I'm 42 years old and I still have a jacket that I purchased whenever I was probably 20, 22 years old. Um, you know, for duck hunting. So, you know, the, the gear is really durable. It lasts a long time and uh, it's worth the investment. The, the thing that you don't want to do is go cheap on the gear and you're going to go out there and you're going to be cold and miserable and never give hunting a try. And you're never going to see that fox. You're never going to have that covey of quail, you know, uh, scary as they jump up um, and make those memories. So invest in good clothing, in, invest in good equipment um, and you'll, uh, it, it'll, it'll help you love this, this sport. Um, so you'll need uh, licenses, um, you'll need permits, you'll need stamps, just like the one that I have on my hunting license right here that hopefully you can see uh, to hunt ducks. Um, uh, firearms or primitive weapon, you have uh, the, the bow right here that you can see in the, the arrows. 
Um, you might want a compass on, on phones now. Uh, they, they usually have a compass, so um, you, you might just want to have a backup just in case uh, that one's, you, you might lose uh, batteries, right? Uh, you might have to have decoys. I mean, you know, most people think about decoys whenever we're thinking about duck hunting, uh, but decoys apply to um, turkeys as well and, and even doves. So, uh, those, and, and those cost money, obviously. Um, you need a place to hunt um, and you need a, to read and learn. I remember in seventh grade, I forgot it was a hardback uh, book, but it was uh, about whitetail deer hunting. And I remember highlighting the pages <laughs> um, and just being really into it um, and, and learning, you know, what, what deer uh, habitat was like and, and what they liked and, and where to expect them. Um, and then just practice. Um, you know, we'll talk about where to go uh, shooting in this state. Uh, but, you know, you, you don't want to go out there and, um, you know, make bad shots. You don't want to, you know, either miss a deer or uh, even worse, you don't want to wound uh, a deer or any other animal. So, you know, practice. Um, and uh, so, so you'll be able to harvest that deer or, or other animal cleanly. Uh, so where can you go hunting in, in this state? Um, there is private land if you're lucky enough to, to know a private landowner, or if you are one, um, you can go right in your backyard, right? Um, and when I think of private land, I'm, I'm usually not thinking about, you know, three acres like we have here in Chapin. Um, I'm thinking, you know, uh, or at least, you know, 20, 20 acres. You, you want to be safe, um, you know, if you're, if you're firing a firearm. Um, so private land is, is fantastic. Um, there's usually less people hunting it. Um, unless they also have uh, permission from, from that private landowner. Uh, WMA, so wildlife management areas, that's that land that our Department of Natural Resources, DNR, uh, manages. Um, specified heritage preserves, you know, I, I love birding on these heritage preserves. Uh, you know, some you can hunt on and some you can't hunt on. Uh, so you just have to make sure you do your research and figure out which ones are, uh, are open for hunting. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about private land actually um, that wasn't from the chat box. So um, you and I have talked about at work, my dad recently purchased some land that he intends to use for hunting. And I obviously haven't asked him this question, but um, let's say you buy, you know, 30 acres or something like that. How do you know when it's safe to shoot your gun or what, what part of the land you can use to shoot your gun? Is that something that you need to get with identifying off the bat or yeah so we'll we'll go to the to the slide in, in just a little bit about um hunter education um so if you're born i forgot what month in the day but i have it on that slide uh after 1979 uh, <laughs> uh you have to uh, have hunter education class right and you have to pass the test so they go over all that but you know if i purchase 30 acres um, and I know that there's houses over here. I'm going to want to have my back to those houses. I don't want to even be uh, tempted to shoot towards those houses. Um, and uh, what time of day uh, there's legally you can shoot um, at a specified time of day after sunrise and before sunset. Okay, you can't shoot, you know, those deer um, or any of those other the, the other wildlife at night. Um, or before sunrise, you know, um, you know, I think for duck hunting, you can shoot 30 minutes before sunrise. Uh, but all, all of those laws are, are in, um, are, are on this great website, and you can uh, get all that information. So I, I don't know if that answered, you know, everything that you were thinking about, but. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay, well, good. Um, and I'm jealous. I wish I had, you know, uh, a, a nice chunk of land um, to call my own. Um, so, so private land, uh, WMAs, uh, the Heritage Preserves, National Wildlife Refuges, you know, we have several in this state, um, and they may have certain um, things that you need to do there uh, in order to hunt. They might, might have something that you need to fill out, uh, but you can go to the website for those National Wildlife Refuges and see what is specific to that, that particular one. Um, national and state forests. So typically uh, what I've seen is that they'll, they'll partner with DNR and um, you'll see these signs right here, wildlife management areas um, on some of that state forest or national forest land. And you know that's being managed for wildlife um, by Department of Natural Resources here in South Carolina. So uh, the state is broken up in four um, segments. You have the, I guess the Northwestern uh, part of the state uh, in, uh, 
the zone game zone one, sorry. And then we have game zone two, three, and then four. So, you know, the, the laws or the, the hunting seasons might be different in game zone four than they are in game zone one. So depending on where you are in the state hunting at that particular time, or if you are just in zone three and you're never going to leave, you know, you need to know these laws um, and seasons in game in game three. So real easy though, you just go to the website, um, you know, click on the, the game zone that you're in and you'll you'll be able to find out everything that you need. So what can you hunt here in South Carolina? Um, and this is just kind of scratching um, the surface a little, but deer, I just kind of picked the, the main ones that, that most people think about. So deer, turkey, dove, quail, uh, waterfowl, alligator. You know, the alligator population is doing so well. The, um, I, I think it must have been within the last 15 years or so uh, that they um, uh, permitted uh, folks to harvest alligators. You do have to have a permit um, you know, before you hunt one though. Uh, rabbit, squirrels, and other species. Um, so what can you buy at a grocery store? You can buy some of the same stuff, um, but you can also buy chicken, beef, pork, turkey, lamb, bison, venison, alligator, turkey, quail, duck, and rabbit. And the reason I, you know, wanted to put that uh, uh, up there was, you know, I, I have uh, some birding friends that don't hunt and, uh, you know, they, they don't like the idea of hunting. Um, but they're not, they're not vegetarians. Um, and they'll, they'll, you know, talk about, you know, uh, reasons why not to hunt, you know, because you're harvesting an animal while, while they're eating a turkey sandwich. So, you know, I just, I want people to, people to know that we're, we're taking some of the same things that are, that are offered in, in grocery stores. Um, and just think about it. It's, it's organic, um, unless you're on some kind of crazy farm that uses all sorts of stuff, but you know, for the most part, it's, it's organic. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's food as it, as it should be, right? So licensing and laws, I'm not going to get into this much because I'm not a DNR law enforcement officer, um, but you do need a hunting license um, and more in, in a lot of cases um, to hunt wild game in South Carolina. So you might also need a permit, a tag, a stamp, um, and I'm gonna show you my hunting license one more time. So. I do have a duck stamp, you know, in order to hunt ducks and I did sign it. Okay, you have to do that. And I also signed my, my license right here. But on the other side here, I, I have a migratory bird permit to hunt doves. And I also have a migratory waterfowl permit, which is different than this stamp to hunt uh, ducks here, or waterfowl that could include geese too, um, here in the state of South Carolina. Um, and this isn't reciprocal. I can't go to, you know, Georgia or, or North Carolina to, to hunt with this license. I have to have, you know, that state's license. And you can get, you know, non-resident license that are, that are temporary for, for other states. Um, and, or if you're visiting South Carolina, you know, South Carolina offers those too. Um, so depending on what you're, what you're hunting, where you're hunting, you need to go to these websites here um, and figure out exactly what you need. But the, they'll answer all your questions. Um, and if, if you can't find what you need on DNR's website, you can always call them um, and someone will be there to answer your questions. Yes, ma'am. So Babs Rice just pops this into the comments and um, it only came to us So just a friendly reminder, please make sure your questions are going to all panelists and attendees. But BAPS wanted to know, um, for these licenses, is that something that you need to purchase well in advance of a hunting trip? Or what if something comes up spur of the moment? Um, when do you need to get that license? Yeah, you know, luckily with technology, um, you can purchase that license, you know, the, the day before or the day of. Um, uh, your, your hunt. So, you know, back in the day, yeah, I would have had to go, we used to go to a big box store, Walmart or Kmart to get our license. And if we didn't have it, uh, we didn't have it and we couldn't go hunting. Um, but now, you know, you can, you can go online and again, the morning of you can, you can buy your license. And as long as you can show them the, the receipt, um, you're, you're good to go. Now is probably a good time for us to mention that we do sell that uh, waterfowl duck stamp on the SCWF website. So uh, for any of you who are looking to get a duck hunt, and I don't know if it's still season, that's more of a J question, but we do sell those. It is, it is. I think the duck season ends uh, January 28th, but then you have also, you have, uh, you know, goose season that extends out into February. Um, I can't remember the dates uh, exactly, uh, but you would need a 
duck stamp for that too, right? Even though you're hunting geese, it's, it's waterfowl and that's what that stamp is, is for. Um, so yeah, we do sell them and they're beautiful and we'll, and we'll talk about those in a little bit too. So here's the hunter education course. Um, and so it'll, it'll teach you, you know, um, everything from laws to uh, proper hunting etiquette to uh, uh, gun safety and, and hunting safety. I, I remember uh, my dad and I going, um, you know, I, and I guess it wasn't required back then because I was born in 78, I, you know, just one year before that, the, the 79 date there. Um, but we went with our neighbor and his son and it was, it was entertaining. I thought it was great. It was interesting. Um, and, uh, I was glad I, that I, that I did it, but, um, you know, it, it had all these scenarios and it really, really taught you, um, or talked a lot about hunting, hunter safety. Um, but that was something that, that our parents also, also taught us. Um, so you can go in person. If you go to this website, um, they'll have a list of dates and locations that are available and you can just, you know, pick a, pick a place and a date and, um, and go to one of those in-person uh, classes that they have. And based on what I saw, it looks like they have resumed those classes even with COVID, but they do space um, those the, the participants um, safely uh, between each other there. Um, it, it's recommended that participants um, 10 or older, um, uh, you, you know, go, go to these classes. Uh, any, anybody uh, younger than that, um, I think they kind of discourage that uh, because of the material that studied. Um, if you are 12 years old or older, you can take an online option um, and you just have to pay. It's, it's right under $25 to take this course, uh, but you take the course, you, you, you pass the test, and then uh, they link up with DNR and they can see that you've taken the, the course and you can go hunting. So uh, really great um, ways to uh, take that hunter education course. And even if you were born before 1979, it's, it's always good to get a refresher and uh, maybe learn some safety techniques that you didn't know before. So shooting ranges. Uh, this is just a, a screenshot from the, the DNR site um, on the left there. Um, on the right is my son shooting his pellet gun and he did pretty darn well, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, we were talking about practice and, that, and that's what you, you need to do to, to harvest these, uh, these animals uh, um, ethically. Uh, but look how many uh, shooting ranges are here in South Carolina. It doesn't matter if you live in, in Pickens um, or down there in Dorchester County or right here, you know, in the middle of the state where, where most of us are. Um, you know, you can find a number of shooting ranges um, and they're, uh, they, they just have normal hours of, of operation. Um, and you, uh, there, there's typically not a DNR, you know, representative there. Um, and so you, you go there, you, you talk with the people that are, uh, that are like you, just, just guests. And um, everybody comes to an agreement of when you put out your targets, when you shoot, when you uh, go get the targets after you're done. Um, and it's always been a, a safe process and it's always been an enjoyable um, you know, day out, out in the range. And I've taken my sons now, my dad used to take me and uh, it's, it's always good. So here are the, the, the places that you can go shoot and um, I highly recommend it. All right, so how do hunters contribute to conservation? Um, and I'm gonna read a bit here, um, so I apologize for that, but it's, it's fairly specific information. So the Federal Aid in Wildlife Restoration Act, um, it's called the Pittman-Robertson Act, that's how most of us uh, you know, refer to it as, um, and, and then we can just call it PR after this. Um, it's been great, right? Instrumental uh, for uh, America's wildlife, since it was originally passed, it's been here for a while, uh, in 1937, um, to distribute an excise tax on firearms and hunting equipment to state fish and wildlife agencies uh, for conservation e efforts. So it's an 11% tax on firearms, ammunition, and archery equipment. Um, and it's given to states based on the, the hunting licenses that they sell. So, you know, the more hunting licenses that 
um, are sold here in South Carolina, the more money we will get. So, you know, whenever I meet a birder that is is a non-hunter or just a nature life uh, lover that's a non-hunter, I always encourage them to buy a, a license because again, the more the more licenses that are sold here in South Carolina, the more of the this apportioned money we're going to receive from the um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So. Um, the the let's see the money goes to to the wildlife conservation and hunter education um it's handled by the department of Tre treasury then it's given to the u.s fish and wildlife service um and since distribution began in 1939 um it has provided 18.8 .8 billion dollars to state fish and wildlife agencies that is a lot of money um and all of it all all right is funded by hunters and recreation shooters. Okay, so so my buddies that that don't hunt, but they they love to bird uh, and and just go out, you know, nature and photog uh, photographing wildlife. Um, unless they're buying a hunting license or or buying firearms or hunting equipment, they they didn't contribute to the to the land a lot of times that they're they're enjoying. Um, so states use their PR funds to restore, manage, and enhance wild birds and mammals on, and their habitat. Uh, the PR projects also include providing public access to wildlife resources, hunter education, and development and management of shooting ranges. Um, so, you know, it's, it's done a lot of good in, in all 50 states. Um, and then, so that's the first way that we contribute to conservation. Uh, the second way is that duck stamp that uh, we were talking about before. And there's a picture of the one uh, that uh, we used this year uh, or last year and this year, the 2020 and 2021 um, duck stamp for hunting season. Um, and that's a black bellied whistling duck. Um, so almost, and this is just in South Carolina, almost 38,000 acres at five refuges here in South Carolina have been conserved through funds received from federal duck stamp sales. Um, and since 1934, 6 million acres uh, of mostly wetland, bottomland, or grassland habitat, habitat have been acquired um, you know, through duck stamp sales, and that's, that's for the whole country. Uh, so, so really, really great. And uh, I buy one as a duck hunter each year, but I also uh, buy one as a birder each year. So think about that 6 million acres. Do you think it's just helping ducks out? Do you think it's just helping, um, you know, geese out and swans? It's, it's helping all sorts of, of uh, birds, shorebirds. Um, think about all the sparrows that are that will probably use, uh, utilize this, the same habitat, um, all these grasslands that are saved. Uh, so, so, not, and not just the birds, think about all the mammals and, and reptiles and amphibians that are helped too. So buy a duck stamp, even if you, you aren't into this hunting thing, um, you know, buy a duck stamp, buy a hunting license and uh, contribute to conservation. Um, and I would say the third way, and there's probably many, many, many more reasons uh, that, that they contribute to conservation, but hunters um, contribute because they're connecting with nature, right? So, uh, when I think of those memories with my dad, it pulls at my heartstrings, right? And um, if I'm if I'm going to emotionally attach to something uh, in a positive way, I'm going to take care of it. I'm not going to litter. Um, if I see you know things are, are happening to exploit that land, I'm going to fight for that land um, and the animals within it. So it's a it, once you connect with something on on that level, you're you're wanting to protect it um, or you're going to want to protect it. So that's that's another reason I think hunters contribute to conservation. Just a second. All right. Um, unfortunately, hunting uh, or hunters are in decline. So 1991, 14.1 uh, million hunters were recorded. In two th 2016, 11.5 million hunters were recorded uh, through a national survey. Um, so think about that, you know, think about all the money that is, uh, is being lost through uh, gear that's being purchased through firearm sales. Um, it, due to that, uh, the excise tax, you know, that's not getting paid uh, since there's, uh, you know, 3 million less hunters there almost. Um, uh, think about all the people that aren't following, falling in love with, with the outdoors uh, with that reduction. Uh, so right now, um, there's a bill that was introduced. It's called the Pittman-Robertson Modernization Act. Um, so that would, if passed, would authorize some funding uh, from the PR excise taxes to be spent on, uh, by state wildlife agencies on recruiting and then marketing to hunters and recreational shooters 
Uh, so they you know, reverse those declines in hunting participation, um, which provides so much of the, the, the money that we need for conservation. Um, so, you know, it's important to get people introduced to hunting. Um, I don't know when that, it, when, how long it's going to, that, that bill's going to be, you know, uh, there just uh, stagnant, but hopefully it gets passed and we'll see more um, participation. We'll see more advertising and marketing towards uh, youth and um, hopefully to get um, adults taking their, their kids out. Um, but you can do it. Uh, all you have to do is, is go outside. So Shannon, whenever your, your dad goes hunting or one of your brothers go, goes hunting, hopefully they'll ask you <laughs> to go hunting, but you don't need to wait. You can go whenever you want, um, hopefully. Um, and take a friend, you know, I want to see, you know, one of, one of my best memories this past year in the Duff field was seeing three females hunting. I saw all this blonde hair at the end of the field. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. So, you know, to, to see more females hunting, um, you know, would, would be great. Um, but to see more people our age and younger hunting would, would also be equally as great. Well, don't worry, Jay. I promise that at some point my sister and I will be going hunting on the property. Um, they're just getting settled and getting used to everything. Um, I did want to add in, I don't know if you mentioned this in a later slide, but um, we're hoping, our fingers are crossed, that we can host our women's outdoor retreat this year. Um, but uh, that is another place where women especially can come and learn some of those outdoor skills. We offer classes on skeet shooting and archery, which are both um, tools for hunting. So um, definitely worth checking out. Hopefully we can have it this year, but if not in a future year, for sure. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, and, you know, and, and just to kind of describe who these, who these people are, we have a business owner, we have a, a sales rep, we have a doctor, and then, and then you have me and with, with all of our kids. Um, and so, you know, it, the, you, you don't have to be, you know, some, some fella, um, you know, from, from the country to, to, to go to enjoy hunting. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it spans all, all sorts of uh, different types of people and, uh, and in, includes them and their family. So I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's a great way to get outdoors. It's a great way to teach uh, about conservation. Um, and it's a great way to, to fill your freezer. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted to keep this this webinar uh, uh, shorter just because I didn't want to bore everybody to death with with reading and and you know talking about laws um, because you will have to do that <laughs> with 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 DNR and, and one of their eight hour long classes if you if you do that in person one you'll have to learn all about all that stuff um, anyway so uh, I wanted to keep this one short and I just want to end it with with this one you know just will you give hunting a try um and think about all these uh these things you know it is i'm telling y'all the the sunrises and sunsets that i've seen out there um i i can't remember them all just because they're they're so uh numerous um uh but but they're amazing and i look forward uh to them every single year um it's exciting look my brother's out there in a boat um picking up decoys or picking up something out there uh it's it's great it's it's good for you it's exercise um, it's so fulfilling. Um, it can be delicious. And think about the conservation uh, part of it, you know, not just the, the, mo the monetary value of it, but think about, you know, all the things that we see out there, you know, like this uh, prominent caterpillar uh, right, right there on a, uh, on a, it's probably vaccinium, so blueberry leaf. Um, and you get to, you get to have all these intimate, um, experiences with with nature and it makes you ask questions it makes you want to learn more about it um you're, you're not just out there staring at the sky or staring at a tree you're you're looking at everything um you're listening to the wind you're you're you know uh, paying attention to the water um and and how everything works so i, I I'm, I'm telling you it'll it'll make you a a better uh, nature lover um, if you if you give hunting a try. So if you have any questions um, about it, how to get started, um, if you have additional questions, please, please uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. I'm here to help. But um, that's the presentation. And uh, uh, if anybody else has any questions, um, please, please ask them. Thank you so much, Jay. I know um, this was incredibly helpful for, for me. So I hope it was for some others. Um, we've got another minute or two if anybody wants to pop a question into the chat box. We will, of course, um, send out all those links that Jay did provide in the webinar. Um, we'll send those out as follow-up so that you can click over to those websites and 
and <laughs> excuse me, take that DNR class um, if needed, or just go ahead and purchase those necessary licenses. Um, Jay, I will say, you know, my my middle brother who spends a good portion of his year duck hunting in other parts of the country. One of the things that he always has when he comes back is stories of connecting with people of all walks of life. He he meets so many people out in the field and it's really cool that hunting can can still connect multiple generations and provide that kind of fun year round. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then that reminds me of a board member of ours um, that couldn't go this year uh, just due to safety reasons. And it's the first time that I think he couldn't go since like, I think it was like 1996. Uh, wow. So, so think about that. And, and, you know, he almost had tears in his eyes whenever he was, you know, telling me that uh, it's, it's such a good experience. And it's uh, again, it's, it's living life. I, I love it. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time. So we will go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Um, we will make this available on YouTube and we will send out um, a class follow up. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you for a future webinar. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks a lot, Shannon.